Hello, my name is Linda. I'm glad you're here. I'm going to read Volume 7 of Story of the Red Rat and the Red Hen. First story is The Red Rat Campaigns. The Red Rat comes out of his den. He goes looking for the Red Hen. I can't get to sleep, he says. I already tried counting sheep. What is troubling you, my cheese fondue? The Red Hen asks. I saw the wolf rat cheat, he says. When I said that it wasn't fair, he said that he didn't care. He said that cheating is okay if you can't win the legal way. He is mistaken, my piece of bacon, says the hen. Once you cheat, you have to lie. You grow perfidious and sly. You can't be trusted. Your integrity is busted. It's a slippery slope, my double egg yolk. The wharf rat doesn't care about that, says the red rat. Perhaps the reason that he doesn't is that his inner eye is shut, says the hen. He may have put it on the shelf because he's scared to see himself. When you look inside with your mind's eye, you see yourself there waving high. Maybe for him, my Cracker Jack, there's no one in there waiting back. Maybe he has to build his being out of what others are seeing. Maybe that's why he has to win. And why, maybe, we should pity him. Now my yellow Easter peep, return to bed and go to sleep. The next day, the red rat marches right up to the wharf rat. I want to let you know how sorry I am, he says, that your inner eye is out of order. What? asked the red rat, the wharf rat. I said, I'm sorry that your integrity is a mess and that you are becoming perfidious, says the red rat. What? says the wharf rat. Sit down, please, the red rat says. I call this meeting to help you stop cheating. It's not okay to break the rules even when you're going to lose. Now, let's get down to business. Are you a good gymnast? How about golfing or discus throwing? Any expertise in rowing? I like melon bowling, says the wharf rat, and horse hubble rolling, and dumpster diving and dump patrolling. Let us move away from sports, the red rat says, to competitions of other sorts. Given your love of attention, you should be a politician. Here's the plan. You be the candidate for office. I'll do PR and help you be honest. What do you think? The idea doesn't stink, says Wharf Rat, but run for what? How about president of the Trash Lover Union, asks the Red Rat. The Wharf Rat says, oh, as if. The competition is way too stiff. How about the Candy Appreciators Association, the Red Rat asks. The Rodent Square Dance Coalition? The Fish Carvers Guild? The Rock Scissors Paper Club? I prefer Rochambeau, says the Wharf Rat. I'm pretty good at that. The Red Rat says, bingo. You can run for president of the Rochambeaus. What shall your platform be? I suggest inclusivity. Okay, says the Wharf Rat. How is this? If you cut a rock with paper, Vote the wharf rat for a dictator. If you cut paper with scissors, vote the wharf rat. He delivers. If you smash scissors with rock, vote the wharf rat. Why not? I am not so sure, says the red rat, about using the word dictator. Otherwise, it is super fine. I will make posters. You shake hands with voters and kiss baby gophers. If you are sincerely nice, you'll get the votes of all the mice. They'll, you'll see that we are on your side. Your sickly psyche will revive. Your inner eye will come alive. When you look inside again, you'll see a presidential rat with friends. Now let me go home to make the posters. You go be nice to all the voters. The Red Rat in Winter. It is midwinter. The fireplace is bright. The Red Hen is threading cranberries and popcorn onto a string. The red rat is dancing and singing around the house. Winter makes me want to shout, kick my heels up and shout, stick my tail out and shout, throw my head back and shout. Most things make you want to shout, says the hen. 
The rat skips up to the hen. He bends at the waist until his nose hits his knees. He waves his arm in a twirly way. In a deep voice he says, May I ask you to join me in the hokey pokey? The pleasure would be mine, says the hen. They put their right foot out, they put their right foot in, they put their right foot out and they shake it all about. They do the hokey pokey and they turn themselves around. They get so dizzy that they both fall down. Oh my goodness, says the hen. It must be hot chocolate time again. They feel happy. The red rat gives presents. The red rat is excited. I made presents to give all the rodents, he says. Wisdom cards. The hen says, that was thoughtful. You made a pot full. How did you make them? I ripped paper into rectangles, the rat says. Then I cut out wisdoms and glued one on each card. Then I painted them with finger paints. I made a big mess. Creativity is not tidy, says the hen. We can clean it up again. What a lovely card collection. Where did you find so much wisdom? The rat says, I got the wisdom from magazine pages, wisdoms of the ages for all ages. When the whole world is silent, even one voice becomes powerful, Malala. I chose this for the kangaroo rat because he is brave and compassionate. Do I not destroy my enemies when I make them my friends? Abraham Sir Lincoln. This one is for the chinchilla because it has the word enemy. What it means, says the hen, is that when you befriend your enemy, you no longer have an enemy. That is good advice for the chinchilla, not for me, says the rat. There is nothing in which rodents more betray their character than in what they laugh at. Johann Wolfgang von Gopher. I made this one for the lemmings because they laugh at everything. Everything is hard before it is easy. Johann Wolfgang von Gopher. This one is for the beaver. He is having trouble learning to paddleboard. Integrity has no need of rules. Alberat Camus. This one is for the wharf rat. He does not like rules either. Let us be grateful to the mirror for revealing to us our appearance only. Samuel Ratter. For the popular squirrels, I made one with mirrors because they love to admire their exteriors. Nothing in life is to be feared. It is only to be understood. Mousy Curie. I made this one for the Dormouse violinist. Because he is the timidest, he must try the hardest to be courageous. I made wisdom cards for everyone. The trash collector, the bus inspector, the street sweeper, the manhole keeper, the doctor, the dentist, and the stuffed bear. Now I'm going to pass them out. Off marches the red rat with his basket full of cards. A while later, he skips back in. I'm all done, he says. It was fun. You should see what I got back. Two, I am touched. Ten, thank you so much. Six hugs and a nose rub. A ton of smiles, the real kind. Twenty-five high fives. One, this means a lot. And one, aren't you a sweetheart? It's all in this basket. It's for you. The red rat hands the basket to the hen. He hops and skips. You probably thought that I forgot, he says. Ha ha, I have a present for you after all. The red hen looks into the basket. She is quiet. Then she says, never have I ever seen such a wonderful present as this basket of happiness. It is the best present in the whole world. I feel as happy as can be. Now, let's sit by the fireplace and have hot chocolate and cinnamon toast. While we thread cranberries on the string, I will tell about the bear who was a marmot king. The red rat sees spots. There's a new rat at school, says the red rat. He has spots. The chinchilla called him ugly, spotty McSpotty. The hen says, the chinchilla's inner eye looked at unusual and saw ugly. That happens commonly. Now, let's see. Are spots ugly on a pony? A spotted trout? A leopard? An ocelot? That's not the same, says the red rat. Their spots are familiar. Rat spots are peculiar. They could be a sign that his inner self is not like mine. No, says the hen, that is a misconception. 
All rats are alike within. Spots are nothing more than exterior decor. The rat goes to school and comes home again. He looks determined. The marmot and I, he says, saw the spotted rat cry. We know why. He thinks he is a freak. So we organize Spot Appreciation Week. On Monday of Spot Appreciation Week, the red rat comes to school with aqua spots. The marmot has lime and pink spots. The kangaroo rat has pink and yellow spots. The gerbil has purple spots. On Tuesday, the dormouse joins in. He plays spots in the name of love on his violin. On Wednesday, the wharf rat concludes that voters favor spots. In short order, he gets spots. On Thursday, the popular squirrels agree that fashionistas require spots. The next thing you know, they all have spots. On Friday, guess what? The chinchilla shows up with spots. What happened to ugly Spotty McSpotty? Asked the red rat. The chinchilla says, what a thing to say. I'm shocked. You seem to have a problem with spots. I've always liked them lots. That night, the red rat dreams that he gets a letter from the giant rat of Sumatra. It says, good on you. Sincerely, the giant rat of Sumatra. What a nice letter. What a nice dream. The end. Think it through, kangaroo. The red rat makes art. Annual art week has arrived. Everyone is making art. The red rat is carving a cake of soap into a sculpture of an eagle. A cake of soap is nice to carve, he thinks. It is so solid and so soft. I get to use a butter knife and sliver slippery shavings off. The eagle is a little lopsided, so the red rat carves a little more. Uh-oh, a wing breaks off. Now it is a pigeon. The pigeon is a little lopsided, so the red rat carves a little more. Oops, there goes the other wing. Now it is more like a snake. It is a pigeon metamorphosing into a snake, thinks the red rat. I am like Auguste Rodin. I have special carving talent. On art day, everyone will crowd around my sculpture. Oh my goodness, what is that, they will say. Such fine art by the red rat. It will be sent immediately to the Museum of Rodin Artistry. I will mingle at parties and be on TV. Yes, the pigeon snake is my first work in soap. Yes, I do seem to be a prodigy. The red rat takes his sculpture to school in his lunchbox. His juice bottle leaks. When he opens his lunchbox, there is the pigeon snake floating in juice. When he fishes it out, it slips through his fingers and slides down the gutter. It slithers over the sewer grate, down the drain, and out of sight. Everyone crowds around. Oh my goodness, what was that, they say. I happen to know, because I'm smart, says the chinchilla, that it was performance art. It showed the idea that we all go down the drain eventually. Actually, it was an accident, says Red Rat. Naturellement, says the chinchilla. It showed the idea that everything is an accident. <coughs> Excuse me. Everything isn't an accident, says the Red Rat. Then why did you make art to show that everything is an accident, asks the chinchilla. You don't understand art. The lemmings, of course, all join in. The drain denotes mortality. The soap symbolizes purity. The rat's art lacks maturity. His future is obscurity. Don't listen to that snobbish bunch, says kangaroo rat. Would you like to share my lunch? The end. Stand firm, Taggy Derm.